In this question, we're asked to find the electron configuration of a neutral germanium atom. So our first step is to figure out how many electrons are in a neutral germanium atom. So heading over to our equation sheet, we're looking for germanium. And after scanning, I can find it here. And we're looking for the atomic number that tells us how many protons we have. And that's in the top left. So 32, that's the number of protons in a germanium atom. And it's asking how many electrons we have in a neutral atom. We know if the atom's neutral, the number of protons, which are positively charged, must equal the number of electrons, which are negatively charged. So we know we have 32 electrons in our germanium atom. Our next step is to figure out the electron configuration. So before we do that, let's just go through what some of these things mean. So to start with, let's have a look at our diagram that we're going to be filling out. We can see we've got all these boxes shown here. And each of those boxes represents an orbital. An orbital is a place where electrons kind of live inside an atom. And if you have a look in here, you can see they might be empty. So that means they don't have any electrons in them. Or they could have one or two electrons residing in them. So each of these orbitals is a place where up to two electrons could reside in an atom. Now you'll also notice we've got some numbers, one, two, three, and four. These represent the energy levels in an atom. So exactly the same as in our Bohr model that we've already looked at, where we had our energy levels. These are exactly the same thing. So the first energy level, if you remember from the Bohr, medal, Bohr model, that fit up to two electrons. The second energy level fit up to eight electrons, as did the third energy level in our Bohr model. Um, so these numbers represent exactly the same thing. However, we also have sub-energy levels in this model. So you can see we've got 1s. 1s is the s sub-energy level. Then we've got 2s and 2p. So we can see on our first energy level, we've just got one orbital in the s energy level, the sub-level, that fits up to two electrons. So that's our first level that fits up to two electrons, as expected from the Bohr model. Then our second level has 2s, which is a sub-level with one orbital that fits up to two electrons. Then we have the 2p sub-level, which has three orbitals. Each orbital fits up to two electrons in it. So that means that our p sublevel can fit up to six electrons in total. So 2s fits two, 2p two fits six. So together, the s and the p fit up to eight electrons, which is the same as what we expected from our Bohr model. There are more types of sublevels as well. There's a d, and there's another one not shown on this diagram, which is the f. So let's just take note of that. We've got our S, P, D, and F suborbitals, or sublevels, sorry. The S sublevel has one electron orbital in it. The P sublevel has three orbitals in it. The D sublevel has five orbitals in it. And the F sublevel isn't shown in this diagram, but that has seven orbitals in it. Let's just add some labels here. So this is the number of orbitals. This is our energy sub-level. And then these down here, these are just our energy levels. And I'm gonna add some lines to make this a little bit clearer. Okay, so now let's figure out what we have happening in each energy level. So energy level one just has the S sublevel with one orbital in it. Energy level two has a 2S and a 2P. So we have 2S and 2P. Remember the 2P level has three orbitals in it. Each of those fits two electrons. So in total, we've got eight orbitals here. The three level, we've got 3s, 3p, and if you look over to the right, we've got 3d as well. So 3s, 3p, 
and 3D. And you can see up there, the D level has five orbitals shown. Then in our four level, on our diagram, we see four S and four P. And then our diagram stops, but there's actually more. There's a four D and there's a four F. And remember, F can fit seven orbitals, which is up to 14 electrons, since each orbital has two electrons in it. Okay, so there's more. There's energy level five, six, seven but we're not showing those on our diagram. We're just gonna look up to four for now. Okay, so those are all our sublevels and our orbitals we can see on our diagram. We know each fits up to two electrons. However, there are some rules for how we fill them. So the first rule is named the Aufbau principle. And this rule tells us about the order that we fill each of these sublevels. And it says we fill the lowest energy level first. So lowest energy orbitals are filled first. Now you might expect that the lowest energy levels just to be 1s and then 2s and then 2p and so on, just following along uh, for each energy level and each sublevel. However, it's not exactly following that order. It's close, but there are some differences. So to remember the order, uh, what we're gonna do is look at the diagram we've drawn and we're gonna draw some diagonal lines or diagonal arrows on it. So going from the top right to the top left. First, I'll draw an arrow like this. So that arrow went through a 1s energy level. So that's our first energy level. Then our next arrow, just goes through the 2s energy level. So we've got 1s first, then 2s. Our next diagonal arrow goes through the 2p and then the 3s. Our next arrow goes through 3p and then 4s. And then our next arrow goes through 3d and then 4p and so on. So if we look at our order here, it's 1s first, then 2s, then 2p and 3s then 3p, and then it skips to 4s before it fills 3d. So that's the part where it, it goes away from the pattern you might expect. It doesn't go 3s, 3p, 3d. It skips to 4s and then comes back to 3d afterwards. So it's important that we don't just fill these out based on the numbers we might expect. We've got to fill them out according to their energy level. And this is a way to remember that. And it's actually shown for us on our diagram here. You can see the 4s. Next, we have 3d and then 4p. So on this diagram, the height above the 1s shows us the amount of energy that energy level has. We can see 4p is higher than 3d. Okay, so that's the Aufbau principle. Uh, then we have Hund's rule, which I'll write up here. Hund's rule tell us that electrons only pair up if they have to. They only pair up if necessary. And by necessary, we mean if there's no other space for them on that energy sublevel, only then will they pair up. They'd rather be on their own since they're both uh, negatively charged they repel each other, so they only want to be together if they absolutely have to. Finally, we have the Pauli exclusion principle. And this one tells us that electrons have a property called spin. And if electrons are paired up, they have to have opposite spins from each other. So Pauli exclusion principle tells us that pairs of electrons have opposite spins. And spins are shown by uh, arrows with different directions. Okay, I think we're finally ready to go ahead and start filling out our diagram. So as we go, we're gonna count the number of electrons we're adding until we get to 32, because that's how many we have in a neutral germanium atom. Once we get to 32, 
we're done and that's our electron configuration. Okay, so our first electron. According to the Aufbau principle, the lowest energy orbitals are filled first. The lowest energy is 1s. So our first electron is going to go in here and it's represented by one arrow there. Okay, our second electron. Now, we, can, we only have one orbital on this energy sublevel. So the second electron has to go in with that first one. That's Hund's rule. It only pairs up if it has to. Here it has to. But according to the Pauli exclusion principle, the pair will have opposite spins. So the second one isn't going to go in like this with the same spin shown with the arrow. It's going to go in like this with opposite spins shown. Okay, that's two electrons accounted for so far. Our third electron is going to go into our next energy sublevel, which is 2s. Our fourth electron also has to go in that same orbital because there's only one available there. So there's our third and fourth electrons. Okay, our next energy sublevel is 2p. So our fifth electron is going to go in that orbital there. Now our sixth electron can go in any of these three orbitals. And according to Hund's rule, it's only going to pair up if necessary. So our fifth electron isn't going to go in with this one. It's going to go in its own orbital because there's space. It can. Same for our seventh electron. That one's going to go in on its own because it can. The next electron, however, is going to have to start pairing up because there's no spare empty orbitals left. So we're going to have one going in here. The next one's going to go in here and the next one's going to go in here. That's our 8th, ninth, and 10th electron. Okay, so we've got 10 electrons so far. We need to get to 32, so we've got lots more to go. Our next energy level, according to the Aufbau principle, is 3s. So that's our 11th electron. And our 12th electron's also got to go in there, according to Hund's rule and the Pauli exclusion principle. Our 13th electron is going to go in our next energy sublevel, which is 3p. Again, as we add more electrons to this sublevel, first they're going to fill their own orbitals. They're not going to pair up until they have to. And then they're going to start pairing up. So here we've got our 13th, 14th and 15th electrons. And we're going to start pairing up for our 16th, 17th and 18th electrons. Okay, we still are far away from 32, so let's keep going. Our next energy sublevel is 4s, so that's our 19th and our 20th electron in there. You can see here we skipped to 4s. We didn't go straight to 3d because 4s is actually lower energy. So that's something important to note. Then we're going to start filling our 3d. So we've got 20 electrons so far. So 21 is going to go here. 22 isn't going to pair up. It's going to fill its own orbital according to Hund's rule. They only pair up if necessary. So 22, 23, 24, 25. And then they start pairing up because now there's no more space. But they have opposite spin according to the Pauli exclusion principle. So 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, so we're up to 30 electrons. We've got two more to add. The next ones are going to go in the 4p energy level according to the Aufbau principle. We can see that's next. So there's our 31st electron. We've got one electron left to add. We know according to Hund's rule, it's going to go in its own orbital if, it, if available. And there is one available. There's actually two available here. So our last electron is going to go in there. And... We've used up all our electrons now, so we're done. This last orbital here is going to be empty. It doesn't have any electrons in it. Let's check our work. Wonderful. OK, so you can see we followed our three rules there to figure out our electron configuration. And it's important just to note or make sure that you're aware that each of these energy sublevels can fit a different number of electrons. S can fit two. P can fit up to six, D can fit up to 10 electrons, and F can actually fit up to 14 electrons because it has seven orbitals. Okay, our final question, how many valence electrons does a neutral germanium atom have? So remember valence means electrons in our outer energy level or our highest energy level. 
So looking at our diagram, we can see we've got electrons in one, two, three, and four. So four is our highest energy level. And let's just go ahead and circle our energy level four subshells, which are the 4s and the 4p. Those are our valence electrons because they're the only electrons in our outer shell, which is energy level four. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four valence electrons. Notice that the 3d electrons, which are shown here, they're in energy level three, not four. So they don't count here as valence electrons. We've just got four valence electrons. So we can fill that in here. So valence electrons are only those in the outer energy level. Here is energy level four.